Hey Indie Game fans, welcome back to I Dream of Indie. This is Old Gamer Joe coming at you with another review here on the Nintendo Switch today. Moreau Crystal H is the game we are looking at. Currently priced at $33.99 on discount at the time of this review. Though the game is normally priced at $39.99. This one is developed by Idea Factory and Compile Heart and was published by East Asia Soft. This is a first-person dungeon-crawling RPG, but as we'll get into, there's quite a bit more to it than that. Okay, this is going to be one of the weirder stories I've ever described here on the channel, but here's the main gist of things. You play as Xenox, known as the Lucky Pervert, and he's on a quest to retrieve a bra of darkness, as well as some panties, to unite them and restore peace to the world, because apparently those two things need to coexist, otherwise a giant portal opens up and everything goes to hell. Apparently when the panties and bra are out of sorts, the monster girls start to act up a bit and they get a little bit weird, so it's up to you to get this darkness out of those monster girls, restore them to a peaceful form, and save them and add them to your party. It probably goes without warning here, but this one is catered towards adults, definitely a perverted game for sure, you're going to want to keep this one away from the younger kids, but yeah, if you are into perverted anime, this is probably going to be the game for you, maybe the most perverted game I've ever played. There's a lot going on here mechanically, I'm not sure I'll get into every little facet of this game as it was continually teaching me things even hours in, but the main idea here is that it's a first person dungeon crawler, you're going through a variety of different areas, taking out monsters in random encounters, and these are turn based battles. The main goal of these dungeons is to get to the exit and take out the monster girl that's located there, but there is quite a bit of exploration to be done here and the map does a good job of letting you know where you have been and where you haven't. You'll find tons of different items in these labyrinths, including restorative objects like herbs, but you'll also find things like underwear, which you can gift to the girls. I know I mentioned that these are turn-based random battles, but these may not be exactly what you're used to. The game does twist the formula a bit here. Your main character acts more like a cheerleader, really, than anything else. He has a few options at his disposal, including being able to store so that he can then eventually release and make his monster girl more powerful, or he can also use the insert ability, which allows for one of the monster girls in your party to skip ahead of an enemy attack and go first. As for the monster girls themselves, they'll be doing the bulk of the combat here. They of course have standard attacks and special attacks that they'll learn as they level up, but they also have the ability to charm. This increases your main character's desire, which allows for him to boost the monster girls further. So yes, it is a little bit convoluted, a little bit confusing, maybe more difficult than it needed to be, but certainly interesting and different, you can say that. Of course, there's different equipment that you can equip to the monster girls, and you do have shops that you can visit where you can purchase new items for them as well. On top of all of that, there is a romantic part to this game too. After you've done your dungeon exploration, you can go back to the bedroom and then flirt with these girls, give them gifts, and rub them down in a very odd, weird way. <laughs> If you're playing the game in handheld mode, you'll actually use your fingers and rub the no-no spots, but if you're playing on a controller, you'll have to use the right stick and then find the appropriate spot that they are sensitive to on their body and rub it so that their clothing gets removed. You get a nude flash if you're successful at this, which doesn't actually show nudity, but gets pretty close. And it works the same way for some of the boss encounters in this game, which can have you adding monster girls to your party. I should also note that there's DLCs, which you can access five girls in this game, take them on, they're very challenging, and try to add them as well. Those seem to be included in this version of the game for free, because apparently this one did come out way back on the PlayStation Vita, I was not aware of it whatsoever. There's honestly even more to this game, I could go on and on, I don't want this review to be too long, I just want to give you the gist of things, hopefully I've done that here. But yeah, the main idea is that this is a dungeon crawler with some random encounters and some really pervy stuff thrown in the mix too, and I didn't even touch on the shooting mini game, but you can discover that one for yourself. I should also mention that between your dungeon crawling, there's a ton of dialogue in this game, so do be prepared for that. It's almost on a level of being a visual novel at points. You do have some pretty good writing here though, I was laughing. If you do have an adult sense of humor and you're willing to take those kinds of jokes, I thought the absurdity of it all was hilarious at times. And graphically, I kind of like the look of the game. Actually, the artwork is really well drawn. It's quite beautiful. The dungeons don't look exceptional, but they get the job done. The frame rate did seem a little bit speedier in the docked mode than the handheld mode, but they both work efficiently enough. No major performance issues that I ran into. Nothing mind-blowing here as far as the in-game graphics, but some of the art is really well done. I do have to credit the artist for that. 
As far as the soundtrack, it's pretty good actually. It's kind of upbeat, kind of silly, kind of goofy, but it works well for this game. I will say that the noises that the girls make might get a groan out of some people, but I don't know, I was entertained again by it. Again, this is a pretty absurd game, let's just be honest here. Presentation wise though, it's completely absurd like I said, but it is a well-made product. I kind of walked away from this one with mixed feelings. I didn't necessarily love the game, but I wasn't hating it either. It's pretty competent at what it does. I do think that the game throws in way too many systems that aren't necessary. There's a lot going on here. You're going to be learning new tutorials well into this adventure. This is a really, really long game, so you're going to get a lot of mileage out of it. I know the price does seem a little steep, but for all of the hours that you get, it's more justifiable. You do have to have a tolerance for the perverted nature of this game, of course. So if you aren't into that, then obviously this won't be the game for you. But if you are into some perverted weird stuff, you like anime, you like dungeon crawling RPGs, then this actually isn't a terrible game. It's just not going to be for everyone. So will you be checking out Moreau Crystal H? Let us know in the comments section below, and if you have enjoyed our video coverage today, consider hitting the subscribe button to help us bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming. There's a ton of other ways that you can support iDream of Indie down in the description box below. However you end up doing so, we thank you so much.